Hello, good morning. So uh, we're here to talk today about uh, Debian or Yocto projects, which is the best. Um, so first of all, before I kick off, can you just have a quick show of hands? First of all, of those of you working or have worked on Debian projects that have shipped in Embedded, any, got any Debian um, builders here? Pretty good, about a third, a quarter maybe? Okay, and how many for Yocto project? Uh, slightly more, I would say. Good, okay, so are you doing it right? Uh, skip that. Um, just in case you don't know me, I'm Chris Simmons. I've been doing this kind of thing for quite a few years. This is my 10th Embedded Linux conference, and I actually have a book on the subject. Let's move on. So, what we're going to be talking about then is the dilemma. Uh, I'm setting out to build a project. What should I use? Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about Debian and the good things about Debian. And then I'll talk about Yocto and the good things about Yocto. And then I'll try and reach some kind of conclusion here. Um, I've got to say, this is not an in-depth technical presentation. I'm just going to I just want to discuss the issues around uh, these two environments. So the dilemma. So I'm sitting down. Uh, I've got a new uh, device to design. What do I want, how am I going to build it? Uh, on the one hand, I want to have it done as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, but on the other hand, I want it to be uh, robust and maintainable. So do I choose Debian? or Yocto. So yeah, you can go off the peg. So essentially, if you, if you choose a Debian uh, type distro, you have an off the peg solution. You just grab the bits you want, put it together. You have a solution um, almost immediately. Um, instead, I'm using Debian here as a kind of uh, placeholder for any other distribution of your choice. So. It, could be Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever else. Uh, so when I, when I say Debian, I just mean a, a uh, generic desktop distro. Um, the other real option then is I can go bespoke. I can go to my tailor and, and have my, my suit fitted uh, exactly uh, to my wonderful form. Um, so with, with uh, Yocto project or BuildRoot or a similar build tool, you have a specification of exactly what you want to go into your target system, and that's what the system builds. So off the peg or bespoke, those are, those are your options. So looking at Debian first then. So I think we're all, we all know what Debian is. It's a fully featured um, desktop and server distro tens of thousands of packages, uh, very stable, long-term support, all that wonderful stuff. And um, yeah, the, 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 the package feeds we get from Debian are binaries, so we can just install a binary package onto our device, no messing around with uh, funny cross-compilers and things. So it's a nice, easy environment to work with. I'm looking at Debian from an embedded point of view. Uh, so that means I'm typically not using PC hardware. Um, so the architectures that Debian supports out of the box uh, that are most relevant to us are the, really the ARM architectures. And it turns out that Debian supports uh, three different flavors of, of ARM, 64-bit, uh, ARM64, ARM HF for the uh, Cortex-A 32-bit uh, processors, and ARM EL for the kind of ancient and probably, probably not used anymore um, ARM uh, 920 uh, type processors. Um, and I guess that the Raspberry Pi is one of the key reasons why we are, why I'm talking about this. Uh, everybody has a Raspberry Pi. Anybody here not have a Raspberry Pi? Oh, three people. <laughs> well, yeah, you should get one. Um, so we all know a Raspberry Pi. You can grab this thing, and uh, everybody knows how to, how to do this thing. Um, Raspberry Pi actually doesn't run Debian per se. It runs Raspberryan. But Raspberryan is just a reimagining of Debian, essentially because of the, of the peculiar 
architecture that, uh, that Raspberry Pi has, uh, things are compiled for specifically for the Broadcom chipset. But other than that, Raspberryan is basically Debian. Um, if you're familiar with uh, uh, the BeagleBoard boards, so that's the BeagleBoard, the BeagleBone, and all the various other Beagles, um, yeah, they all come with a Debian distro out of the box. And probably most um, uh, off-the-shelf off um, uh, single-board computers and, and modules will come with a Debian-type distro. So the basic paradigm for developing with Debian and building up your, your product set on Debian is you have a root file system, which you've got from somewhere or other. Uh, somewhere within that, there will be a sources.list uh, file, and that will point to the repositories where you can go and install additional packages. So you do something like apt install, name a package. It goes to the uh, Debian uh, servers. It will find the best uh, match for your, your architecture uh, and the, the versions of Debian you're using, and you download this deb file, D-E-B, and the deb file is a binary which contains all the stuff. You install it. Now you have the XYZ command available. So this is typically what happens then. Uh, so you sit down with your, your project uh, specification. You want to control some uh, lights uh, in, in, a, in a room, or you want to control some machinery even. Uh, Raspberry Pi, boom, let's start typing. So typically, you start off with an off-the-shelf, uh, an off-the-peg image um, from Raspberryan or from BeagleBoards.org or wherever. Then you strip out the stuff you don't want. So you can remove some packages because there are some services you don't need and some other stuff. We kind of slim it down to just the stuff we really need. Then you add in the stuff you do want, apt install. Anything that you've written uh, you know, using uh, compiled code like C or C++, you'll need to compile uh, for the target board. And typically, you do a native compile on the target board. So you can just run your GCC. It'll pick up all the standard libraries. Uh, again, that's nice and easy, if a little bit slow. Plus, any other tweaks, so configuration parameters, um, yeah, other bits and pieces you need to change. And at the end of this, you have a thing called a golden master. So this is now your system set up with all the applications installed, all the packages installed. Uh, everything's tested and working. So once you have your golden master, you then take a copy of it using DD, for example. And then you just clone that onto every unit you ship and you have a product. Okay, so that is the naive view of using uh, a Debian-based distro to create, package, uh, to create uh, products. Um, and I've seen people do this many, many times over on many different products. So, who can see something that can go wrong here? <laughs> Good, me too. So what can go wrong? The problem is this golden master thing. Um, typically, it's not well documented how the Golden Master was created. It's kind of done on the fly with some command line stuff. Maybe you script it, but even so, there's some steps that won't be uh, documented. So it becomes kind of difficult to update this thing. You can do incremental updates easy enough, exactly as you do on your, on your laptop. You can do apt upgrade, you can do apt install, you can do tweaks like that, but if you want to do something really major, for example, if you want to switch to a different and a later version of the operating system, you have to start over from scratch and reinstall everything from scratch, and you can't exactly remember what you installed in which order. So doing major changes becomes either hard or just very, very hard. A more subtle problem is that probably the golden master was created by uh, an individual or a group of individuals, they will have left some kind of footprint or fingerprint uh, on, on, on the system. So 
Maybe there are some user accounts and passwords which they haven't cleaned up. Maybe there is the uh, bash history file which has a record of all the commands they ever entered, which could be useful when you're regenerating this, by the way. Um, maybe there'll be some old system log files lying around. It's difficult to clean up everything when you've done this, uh, this kind of way. So you end up with something which is kind of not entirely clean. Uh, so if you really are serious about using a distro like Debian for real products, you kind of need to go back and do it properly. So that means that you need to uh, write robust scripts that are going to create the image from scratch using rootstock or debootstrap or um, uh, Linaro image builder or whatever, um, and create the root file system image from, from scratch. So now you're going kind of semi-bespoke. Uh, semi so I'm going, to take, I'm going to build my own root file system image from a bunch of packages, just the ones that I want. Then I import my own software configuration. Uh, so I cross-compile my own uh, applications, install them, install the configuration stuff. Ideally, if I want to make this really reproducible, it would be really good to uh, take my application and, and build it as a deb file, a DB file. Then I can distribute my application along with all the other DEB files. So that's kind of the, the, the better way of doing it. Now you have a reproducible thing. You should be able to, at the touch of a script, be able to reproduce exactly that same image. And so now doing updates is easier. If I want to switch to a later version of Debian, I can just make a few twig, tweaks, uh, and I should be able to rebuild uh, my system without too much effort. OK, so now I have a clean copy of Debian, not one that somebody has fiddled around with uh, for several months. Um, so there are good examples of this. If you look at the way that uh, the um, uh, BeagleBoard people do this, uh, there's a, a, the reference there to the um, BeagleBoard image builder. So that's how the Debian image for, for BeagleBones is generated and other Beagles. And likewise for Raspberry Pi, you can have a go and have a look, for example, at PyGen. Um, and that also is a, a nice little build tool that will generate a clean Debian image from scratch. Um, I just want to say a little bit about software update, by the way, because this is uh, a bee that I've had in my bonnet for a good many years. Um, one of the apparent attractions of uh, Debian is that you have um, out-of-the-box uh, software update. Uh, so you can just do uh, apt update, and it will update everything. Just want to say that uh, this is not always the solution you think it might be. And the major problem is that the apt command is not atomic. In other words, if, you, uh, if your system loses power during an update, uh, apt update, it's chance, there's a good chance that you'll end up with, with a corrupted system. Uh, so really, if you are doing uh, system updates on Debian systems, particularly out in the field in remote locations, just want to say apt update is not really the answer. You need something a bit more sophisticated. Um, so Debian is now, or the, 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 the off the peg approach now is looking a little bit less attractive. It's a little bit less off the peg because you're having to uh, create some scripts to generate the thing from, from scratch. And even so, you still end up with something which isn't entirely uh, embedded friendly. So it's going to be large compared to what you can do with Yocto. And the main disadvantage of large, apart from the fact that it's going to take up more storage space, is that you're running more software, which means more attack vectors, and therefore uh, a less secure system. The fact that Debian uh, only has a limited number of uh, architectures uh, can be a problem, especially when it comes to ARM processors. There are a vast range of different combinations of features on the various ARM processes you can get. Um, when you compile uh, Debian, then you're compiling really for a lowest common denominator. So that means that your, uh, the binaries, the, the dev packages you're installing, 
are not uh, optimally compiled for whatever architecture you have. Uh, and that can have some impacts, particularly if, if you have uh, co-processors and such like, which are not being used uh, by the, the main uh, Debian archives. Um, Debian doesn't really know that much about flash memory. It's not optimized to reduce flash memory writes. And as you may know, one of the problems with flash memory is every time you write to it, you damage it a little bit. And you know, typically, you can write to each um, uh, flash sector about 3,000 times before it comes unusable. So you want to try and reduce the, the wear on your flash, typically. Uh, Debian doesn't really have uh, any features, uh, any options to do that. And coming back to this uh, cross-compiling, sorry, coming back to this native compiling thing, um, one of the big downsides is if you've got to compile everything on the target board, these target boards generally aren't particularly powerful. They don't have that much memory or storage. And so compiling stuff natively can become a pain. It's slow and, yeah, it's a pain. Um, and even when you've done all that, I haven't really spoken about uh, the kernel and the bootloader. Debian, of course, doesn't, uh, isn't going to supply a kernel for your particular board because that's going to be specific to your board. Uh, likewise, the bootloader is something very board specific. So I'm just talking, when I talk about Debian, I'm just talking about the, uh, the, the, uh, the root file system. You still have to provide uh, your bootloader and your kernel outside of this somehow. So. That's the Debian side of things. Let's have a look at the other thing. Let's have a look at the Octo project, stroke open embedded. Um, so I apologize to the open embedded people in the audience that I'm emphasizing the Octo project and not open embedded here. Um, let me say again that uh, as with Debian, uh, which is a placeholder for any uh, distro, when I talk about Yocto or Yocto project, I'm also implicitly implying, uh, Im implicitly including um, the open embedded stuff because that's what it is. Um, so the thing about um, Open Embedded Stroke Yocto Project is that you basically give it a, bis a list of instructions and it generates the distro for you. So you can customize the distro to have exactly the bits you want, compile the way you want, et cetera, et cetera. So the key difference here then is instead of taking binary packages and installing them, we are taking source code and compiling that source code to get the package for our target system. So Yocto project has very good support, pretty much industry-wide support uh, in the uh, embedded industry. So um, ARM, MIPS, PowerPC, x86 all have their own uh, Yocto support layers. Uh, likewise, anybody making uh, single board uh, computers or system on module um, devices will almost certainly have uh, Yocto support. And there is also, a, uh, if you want um, to outsource stuff or get com commercial uh, support for various things, there's a whole bunch of companies who specialize in this area. Okay, so looking at the Yocto way of doing things, um, this slide here shows that we have this stuff called metadata, which I'll come to in a moment. And you have this command called bitbake. So bitbake reads a thing called a recipe from the metadata. You give it the recipe name. It will then go to the upstream source code, download the source code, for example, a targz file, uh, compile it uh, using a cross-compiler, generate an RPM file. So now we have XYZ RPM. And then as a final stage, there's a thing called do root FS, which will take all the RPMs you want and generate the root file system for you. So that's the, 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 the steps are, 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 are longer, more complicated, uh, but the end result is we take source code and we generate a root file system. So the power of a Yocto project is, yeah, it's all in the metadata, guys. And in this slide, I just want to uh, illustrate three uh, particular uh, types of the metadata just to give you an idea of, of the flexibility uh, that Yocto gives you. Uh, so there are, key, there are three uh, key parameters when you do a Yocto build. 
uh, distro machine image. Uh, so the distro is a bunch of uh, configuration metadata which says what distribution do I want to create. In other words, how do I want to put my system together? What init daemon do I, want to, do I want to use? What SSH daemon do I, want, do I want to use? And various other policy decisions. Then there is the machine. So the machine is what target hardware am I building for? And I, can, I should be able to change that for, the, for a given distro. I should just be able to switch machines from an ARM-based machine to an x86-based machine uh, to a MIPS-based based machine. I should still get, in each case, a working system that looks exactly the same but just runs on a different architecture. And then the third, um, the third leg of the stool is the image. So when I bit bake something, I give an image that I want to build. And it will then build the, so the image is, is just basically a list of packages, ultimately a list of the RPMs. So it should be able to cross compile all those RPMs, assemble them into a root file system for the machine using the distro uh, configuration that I have. So that's the good stuff, obviously. Um, so now let's admit that uh, Yocto has uh, some downsides. Um, probably the one that most people will initially come to is uh, the learning curve. So whereas with Debian, I can just do uh, apt install and, and everything works, apparently. Uh, with the Yocto project, you have to understand how this metadata works, and it's quite complicated. And you have to invest some time and effort in getting this thing set up. So steep learning curve is probably the biggest reason I hear people say that uh, Yocto project is a, is a, a pain. Um, support is also an issue. So whereas with a, a Debian type distro, you're gonna get uh, long-term support for maybe five years or something. Uh, each Yocto release is only supported for basically two release cycles. There's one every six months, so that's roughly 12, uh, 12 months. Once you get to the end of that 12-month community, community support, you either go it alone or maybe you outsource to one of the um, companies I mentioned a few slides back who can do kind of paid for uh, long-term support. And since you're gonna be building loads and loads of stuff, uh, you need quite powerful hardware to build a Yocto system. And if you're doing this on a nightly build, then you're going to be, you know, you need something that will complete the build uh, within eight hours or something, or six hours. Uh, so you're going to have to invest in some hardware to do this kind of stuff. Okay, so that's the overview of Debian on the one side, Yocto on the other side. Um, I just, uh, I'm at the point of, of uh, coming to some kind of conclusions then, which do I use in what situation? So neither is best in all cases. So Debian. Debian is really, really good uh, for proof of concepts and, type, and prototypes because I can put something together really quickly. I can have something up and running with a, within a couple of days typically. Uh, it's great for kind of one-off projects where you have uh, just a small number of uh, units in use. Uh, so I know people who, for example, use Raspberry Pi on production lines, and they use the Raspberry Pi to run certain tests to check the quality of the whatever. Um, so yeah, that's nice and easy to do. Uh, you don't need any particular ro robustness there, uh, and you're only gonna deploy half a dozen units, so you can go around and update them yourself. That's easy enough. And yeah, it works best, obviously, if you have community hardware of some kind that supports uh, Debian-type distros. Conversely then, Yocto project is great if you have custom hardware. So there is no Debian uh, port already for this hardware, and you could make your own Debian port, of course, but that's almost as much trouble as, as uh, making uh, Yocto work in the first place. So custom hardware, uh, because you are generating exactly the, the, the uh, distro specification that you want, you can leave out the stuff so your attack surface uh, is reduced. And also your storage um, uh, requirements are reduced. 
And also in, in the same vein, the amount of memory, the amount of RAM you're going to need is probably reduced. Okay, so we can make smaller systems, more compact systems using Yocto than we can using off the peg uh, Debian. And one final little feature that, uh, that Yocto has, and also BuildRoot, I haven't mentioned that, but that works as well, is that if you want to do license compliance, uh, these open source build tools generally have a feature which allows you to generate uh, an, uh, a license manifest, so you can see for each package exactly what license it's using. Uh, getting that same information for a uh, desktop distro like Debian is not so easy. So that's it. That is totally it. Um, yeah, so let me open the floor to any questions you may have. Otherwise, we can go and have a coffee. So questions, um, starting over there. I have, I have a microphone. So if you actually look at uh, doing your own Debian packaging, uh, you already alluded to if you're building Debian from scratch, it's almost the same complexity as Yocto. But just to do your own Deb Debian packaging, how complex would you see that as compared to writing uh, recipes for Yocto? So in principle, creating a .deb file, a Debian package, it's almost exactly the same uh, steps as creating a Yocto project uh, recipe. I mean, the, the, the syntax and everything is different, obviously, but the, the concept is, is the same. So it's pretty much the same level of complexity. Anyone else in the middle there? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to uh, pass the microphone around. Uh, but I would encourage you to use the microphone because if you just yell out, then the, this microphone here isn't going to pick that up and it's not going to be on the recording. Hi. It's, not, it's more a comment, not a question. Um, I'm a Yocto fan, so I'm totally on your side. But uh, to be fair, I like to mention here um, the project Elbe. Don't know if you know it. It's from the company Pengotronics. And they promote um, to use Debian um, for embedded systems because their argument is uh, for Debian, um, there are thousands of developers. They get paid from Debian project to work on security issues. And this is the... the uh, uh, the Yocto project, clearly, it has a community and it's, it's part of the Linux Foundation, but there, is, uh, not, there are not so much engineers working on exactly that topic, the security. And yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. So I, I think one, one of the, maybe I didn't emphasize it enough, one of the key benefits of Debian is you do have that community support and you do have uh, a bunch of people doing security updates for all the major components, mm -hmm. which you kind of get for free. Uh, that doesn't happen with Yocto quite so yes, much. Yes, and ju just a laugh thing to, to, to that, the Elbe project uh, supports also a um, meta Elbe layer that can be used uh, within Yocto to uh, build up an, uh, a root file system with Debian packages. Okay, so cool. they, they access then the Debian database with the RPMs. And, and the name of that project was? Elbe, E-L-B-E. -E. I, I can give you a link. Uh, okay, cool, later thank on. you. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else uh, over there? <laughs> Thanks for doing the running, Tim. Uh, I just wanted to add that there's a project by Calabra called Debos, which is um, you describe the Debian root file system you'd like in YAML, add the packages you want, custom scripts you want to do, and it will spit out any Debian supported architecture, root file systems, or tarballs. Um, it's just a really cool project. Kernel CI is using it to create the root file systems they do their boot testing with. OK, that's cool. Uh, so yeah, there's another. It seems that there are many more ways than I realize for creating Debian uh, root file systems. That's great. Yeah, just a comment on this uh, LB and uh, DebOS. And I think that's one of the. When you try to look at building a Debian embedded system, there are too many ways of doing it. Uh, so you have these Debo, SLB, there's, there's 10 other tools uh, that you can choose from. So it's kind of hard if you are thinking long term or multiple hardwares and multiple architect architectures. Uh, that's one, one of the biggest big benefits of the Octo project, as I see it, that you can uh, kind of 
yeah, you can th think long term uh, in yeah, terms yeah. of uh, hardware support. And then these tools, um, yeah, yeah, it's very fragmented. Yeah, uh, that, and that did actually occur to me when I was putting this, these slides together, that when I, I, I do a quick Google for uh, tools for creating uh, Debian images, a bunch do turn up, but there isn't, there isn't one that's kind of the way of doing it. So you're right, so there are lots of different smallish projects doing this kind of thing. Um, there isn't something with a push that, say, Yocto has. But, you know, you, you, your, your mileage may vary. It, it's still a valid way of doing things. Okay, any more? No? Okay, well, with that then, thank you all very much for, uh, for being here, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>